Hi everyone. We're in the kitchen for this lesson, lesson number eight. This is our last lesson for this week, four-week program. The oven's warming up. I can hear it popping back there. And what we're going to do today is uh, nachos. Starting from scratch, we're going to make our own um, tortilla chips. And so what this lesson is about is magic in the kitchen. This is letting wisdom be your guide. Is that what, how you said it? Yeah, okay. that's how I said it. Okay. That's what we're about today. And we are doing the baked tortilla chips for the first time ourselves. So we wanted to do this kind of experiment with you. So you see what we do uh, to really make cooking magic. This is what we love to do. We'll go on the website. We think, okay, I'm done with the bought tortilla chips. I don't feel great after I eat those. But what about my nachos? <laughs> so we go on the web and we look for homemade tortilla chips baked with lime. Those are the things we wanted. And there's this whole list of things. So we go over a few and we get the idea of what we want to do and then we try it. It's like a kid in the sandbox. I don't know about you, but I know I used to have a lot of fun. And what was it that made it fun? It was that my imagination could make anything out of it. I'd make castles, we'd bring some water in and we'd make castles um, with the sand or we'd get trucks. This was a big thing, my brother and I would get trucks, right? And we'd make roads and we'd go all over the place. It was that imagination that made it magic. So, imagination here. We look at a recipe to kind of get a guideline so we're not completely working with a blank canvas. And then we go from there. So. Almost all of them had oil. Now that's funny, I didn't think to Google oil-free. But all I'm gonna do is increase the amount of liquid by using more lime, and you'll see what I'm doing here. Juice of two limes, I can only put a half in at a time, but I found that after they're squished, I can put the second lime on top of it, squeeze and watch how much more I get out of it. Look at all that, that was left in the limes after the first squeezing. So now I put the two limes back in, squeeze again after I had already squeezed all I could get out of it, and look at all that extra lime juice. Now is that creative or what? <laughs> okay, so there's the lime juice. And we're gonna add salt. We're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then we're gonna do both sides of the tortillas with this lime and salt mixture. There we go. So we'll mix that up. We've got our trusty little pastry brush here. And we'll see what happens. Boy, that's a lot more lime juice than I expected. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get all this lime juice out of here. But uh, yeah, here we go. We're painting it on. And we'll see, actually, let me taste that. Yeah, that's Salty and limey. And you know, as I say that word limey, I'll tell you a little story just because I have to have a little filler here. Do you know where the term limey came from when they're talking about British sailors? Well, you may not even know that you're talking about British sailors, but that term limey was coined back in the 1800s when sailors were going overseas and they would contract scurvy on the uh, ships, which is a terrible thing. When you're losing sailors, man, you can't lose sailors at sea. You need everybody, all hands on deck. You know the old saying? <laughs> and so uh, what they discovered is that they didn't even know that the cause of scurvy was the lack of vitamin C, but that's what it was. What they discovered was those ships, when they went to sea and they had limes aboard, the sailors didn't get scurvy. So just by uh, noticing, being observant, they found that if you took limes with you and the sailors all ate limes, they never got scurvy. So they uh, were the ones who did this all the time. Everybody made sure you had limes on board. And so the British got, people started referring to the British sailors as limeys. So there you go, a little history lesson as well. <laughs> Can't beat that, right? 
Okay, that's what we're going to do. So we've got the lime on there. We've got the salt in the lime. And I'm going to put these together and cut them all at once. That makes more sense to me than cutting them separately if I can. So I want to cut them into eighths. You know, cut them into the little tortilla chip squares that we all know and love. That's not working really well, but we're almost there. Did I get that last one? That looks like it. So there we go. Ah, done. So there's that. There's this. Swing it around. Cut it again. How else could we do this? We need a little guillotine. You know, if you have one of those little, which we don't, pizza wheel cutters, I noticed online they used that to cut them. Yeah, that, uh, but I don't think you could go through five tortillas. No, they just did one at the yeah, time. Yeah, do one at a time. Me, I'm always looking for ways to save time by efficiency quotient. And so uh, I wanted to do these in a stack, but... It's hard to get through five. I'm getting through two here, and then the other three will be pretty easy too. Now, I'm doing these in eighths. It's easy to do it that way. A lot of uh, the uh, recipes suggested doing them in sixths instead of eighths. So you decide how big you want them. You see this? Actually, That's that good. Looks plenty for yeah, food, that it? looks great. It doesn't look too small. So we'll go through these, and then we're going to put them on <coughs> a cookie sheet. And I lined the cookie sheet with parchment paper because I have aluminum cookie sheets, and I don't like putting food on aluminum. So I'm just going to spread these out on here. So they'll cook up, and then we'll. Put them in the oven. So we're cooking it at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. Oops. Didn't quite get through. And uh, we'll let you know how it comes out. So magic in the kitchen. Now, how did you follow your inner wisdom, Bill? Well, that's making a good question. This. You know, if I think about it, it's actually a lot like what I would be in the sandbox. How do we know what we want to do next when we're having fun? You know, it's just kind of in that space of presence, in that space of just being open to what's next, it usually just comes. And so it's just like uh, the idea, of, I was thinking I was going to cut all those tortillas one at a time, but as soon as I got to the point of, oh, it's time to cut the tortillas. It was just clear, stack them up, do all five at once. And look what happened, I learned, I can't do five at once. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts just like being in the sandbox. That's the magic, that's the fun. Okay, in they go. They look great. Yeah, good. Now, what made you decide to make this recipe? Like to make your own corn chips so you could make nachos? Yeah, well, like I said at the beginning, um, we were making these nachos out of store-bought corn chips, and we loved the nachos, but there was just something about them that I didn't feel great afterwards. And I noticed if I made the nachos with a lot of corn chips, I felt worse. So then I started reducing the number of corn chips, but you know that by changing that ratio, it was pretty good, but it still didn't eliminate this something afterwards that wasn't great. And so that's when I thought, well, why don't we try making our own corn chips? Because I have read that even baked corn chips, what we were buying the fried corn chips, even the baked fried, uh, corn chips, when they have oil 
there's something about high temperature and oil with the corn that it's just not great for the body. So, you know us, let's go low oil, let's try it. So here we are in the sandbox, magic in the kitchen. <laughs>